This conference will now be recorded. Somebody is saying, yeah, good evening. Uh, who's that? So this is Sandeep. Okay, yeah. Okay, let's continue. So let us let me keep these things open because I need them. Is uh, I need to collect the data from that. Probably it might helpful for you people also when I when I when I discuss this part stuff. Okay. So so now today's topic is this. You know right? Uh, probably we have a, a very good session so far uh, about collections. We have gone a little deeper, but I am not still satisfied because. That is not the level I'm expecting in uh, uh, in, in this uh, collection, sir. No, I want to go a little deeper into that. We'll work on, we would like, I would like to have a working session tomorrow. So probably if you, we'll plan it clearly, okay? Now, point is that, uh, so what we do is today, we will discuss the other hierarchy quickly. Okay? Then what I would uh, like to do is, uh, then we'll go for a working session. That's going to help you a lot, folks. Okay, one minute. We need to open the or we close all this stuff. Okay, my one name, not bad. So what is that hash map that we are working on something like that. the last thing we have tried yesterday is tree map by book okay. and we have implemented the programs uh, probably from the command prompt so i couldn't copy and paste the problems here still uh, i don't think big difference between all this but we have a clarity okay so we have done so far the immutable stuff so what did we do we have discussed about uh, Immutable collection. That's what we have done now. Something. Okay. So now you know what is immutable. A couple of use cases, right? I think you are clear, right? Immutable means uh, any collection, anything, not just collection, anything which can be, which cannot be modified, not at program level, but at memory level. This point you should underline. If you have a confusion, in this point immutable means. Uh, so here uh, we cannot modify objects. Okay. Immutable means we cannot modify an object. That's what it is. Object. Usually it is like, you know, at, at, uh, not at program level. At program level, we can make a change. But don't think that for uh, it is getting updated. It's not updated. This, the actual object is not getting updated. Keep in mind. Whenever you try to modify an immutable object, then it won't change the the actual object, the original object, but a new object is created one more time. And the change is applied to the new object, on new object, but not on the old object. This point, you have to underline this. You have to, you know, write, uh, you have to be very clear because many people don't have this clarity. So we cannot modify, usually at what level? Not at program level, but at memory level. Program level, it appears to be modified, but it is not modified. Okay, but at what such? But at memory level. This or not? So this is the this is very important thing you have to keep in mind. Following or not? Is that clear? At what level we cannot modify the object uh, at memory level, not at program level. This thing, if you remember, this is clear. But but there is a question. Not always this is possible, right? There are situations where you need to do, you need to frequently update the object. Suppose I have a list, assume that, assume that I have a list or something that is a subset, whatever it is. Okay, 
Suppose if there is both hierarchy, so let me take hash as a scenario because uh, we don't have list in a mutable collection. We have uh, some other array buffer or something uh, uh, as a what is that term? Uh, substitute to this list in in uh, in in this uh, mutable hierarchy. Okay. So actually, before going to talk about it, mutable uh, hierarchy. So this is the mutable hierarchy. It looks like this. It is a, it is a big tree actually, uh, comparative to the mutable. Uh, the tree of uh, mutable is a bit bigger here. You can see there the same same sequence, same map, and same set. That doesn't change. And those this those popular and crazy implementation classes are same here. Even for map hash map is there, tree map is there, list map is there. But there is some change actually. You know, now sorted map is not coming into the picture. You can see that directly you don't have any sorted map. Okay, these are all direct implementation classes. Suppose if you go to the immutable hierarchy, tree map comes from which one? It comes from sorted map. But here you don't have that, that kind of uh, setup here. You don't have that setup. Okay, those were the changes. And linked hash map. Is an extra here which we don't find uh, in the, in the immutable hierarchy and weak hash map is one more and the immutable map adapter is one more. These are all new things and these are all synchronized map, multi map, and observable map. These are extra things and these are tried sets. This is a question for uh, for your information. Let me tell one interview question in Scala today. What they have he has asked me. Okay, are you do you want that question to know? Because as I am this here. There is an interview question. I am talking because these are traits here and uh, these are classes. I just remember the question. So the question coming from this interview is, uh, what is the difference between a trite and abstract class? That is the question. Today, that is the question the guy had asked. This is from QScala concept. Of course, I have I have given a very beautiful answer. Definitely, that guy got satisfied. No doubt. About it. Okay, that is the question. Make a note of it. So these are all traits. Uh, these are all traits. So whatever in blue color are right. So right. So point is all these are all this can be all these are mutable. You can modify them. The question is uh, suppose you have a hash map here. Okay. Uh, you can see here again uh, again in the in the set you can see same thing. You can see the set part also. You see that. You can see here sorted set uh, bit set. Then synchronized hash set is there. This is common for both mutable and immutable. Linked hash set uh, and other stuff is there. Observable set this is there. Now the and under sequence you have linear and uh, indexed. Uh, and the under linear you can see linked list is there. Earlier we have list. Actually, if you see the difference, we don't have list now. We have a linked list. Can you see there? And uh, we have. Mutable list, synchronized list, uh, stack and array stack. This stuff is there. And, and there is a queue. Additionally, we have queue here. We don't have queue in uh, where in the immutable hierarchy. We have a queue and synchronized. And here, I am not going too deep into every collection here, not necessary. Because, uh, you know, right, uh, you know, I told you clearly, you know, how to implement with how to work with immutable collection. And if you know how to implement immutable collection, even the, it is same for mutable collection. Methods are also almost same here. It, it doesn't change because most of the methods are coming from traversable and iterable. The most popular methods are what this map method, filter method, and then uh, uh, this uh, reduce method, this drop method, while drop while or take this collect, okay, transformations and uh, the difference methods. All that stuff is same. It doesn't it's not different. So in that way, what is the point here is. Uh, that is same. The uh, the working uh, thing is same. What changes is that uh, we can modify these objects. We cannot modify immutable objects. And, and again, modify in sense what? Not at program level, but at memory. Doesn't mean that we cannot modify immutable. We can change immutable in program, but what? It is not exactly changing in memory. You have to remember this. But for mutable, it is not the case. I, I will take a small scenario and explain the difference between mutable and immutable. Later on, creating objects, adding elements, uh, you know, testing those values, all that is same. That doesn't change. Got it right? You get the point. Now, under sequence, probably we will take linear and uh, indexed sequence. Under linear sequence, let's work with uh, uh, linked linked list and uh, stack. Probably today we'll try stack also. Uh, under indexed sequence, we'll try these things. Okay, what is that? Uh, 
probably array buffer we try and uh, maybe if you want we can try double linked list and uh, list buffer this term okay. so now otherwise we'll just test one or two under indexed sequence one or two under linear sequence because it's almost you know right we can easily get the differences but one more thing i would like to explain to you people is synchronized stuff you know right there are there is a synchronized prefix for many of these uh, entities you know you can write synchronized set synchronized map synchronized so i, I need to give some clarity on that part and other things are uh, like you know like uh, as as uh, as similar to as uh, your uh, mutable immutable stuff maybe the you need a little clarity on synchronized areas that is also one thing and the other clarity is what is exact difference between mutable and immutable collections and other than that uh, uh, the way we implement methods all that stuff is same if you have any doubt or question then we will we'll do it with a program to understand okay. now i am going into the I am taking one example. Let me take hash set because, you know, right? Uh, we have used a hash set. Uh, this is there in both uh, uh, under the immutable collection and uh, mutable collection. Let's take this as a scenario. Okay, uh, are you fine with that? So I am taking hash set. So now you you have observed the hierarchy here, right? This is the hierarchy. Got some clarity now? So almost it will be same. The this uh, trouble has three kids. Uh, this sequence map and set that doesn't change. Again, you see this is a bit. Uh, I think uh, this has more 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 kids per sequence or more map or set. Okay, uh, immutable doesn't have big uh, family planning. I think uh, immutable has a bit of family planning there. But here uh, probably this doesn't have that. I'm just kidding. Okay, I'm just uh, saying that this has more more change. That's what my point is. So, uh, but in immutable we don't have those many uh, chains okay that is the difference but uh, but th these are required all the whatever they are giving here means uh, they are necessary for us okay now let me switch to the discussion now now we are talking about we finished immutable now we, we are jumping to the mutable collection okay mutable collection okay that's fine Probably I have little doubt my spelling there. Okay, M U T A V L, not M U T U B L. That's what I sense that. Okay, so I go. Now, what is mutable? A mutable collection is a collection, or a mutable object. Is a mutable object or collection? Object or collection? Is a collection. What is that, sir? Which can be modified. Which can be modified. Okay. And uh, what is that? Modified. You can you can override data here. In fact, the point is here. We can override data in uh, mutable collections or mutable objects. But that thing is not possible for immutable objects. You cannot overwrite that uh, that uh, data in the same object. If you try to overwrite, a new object is created. That is the exact difference. Okay. So, which can be modified. And another important point is whenever you try to, you, you try to modify. Okay. Whenever we try to modify, what is that, sir? Modify a mutable object. What happens, sir? Um, the data in the mutable object what happens sir mutable object is overwritten what happens sir over that's what happens here and no new object is created sir no new object is created no new object is created then you ask me a question probably sudarshan or uh, you know right up uh, some some of some of you sudarshan or uh, rohan or uh, shrikanta sandeep or Deepak, whomever it is, Madhu, anyone, okay? You might ask me a question. Can you prove that it is not getting modified? Sandeep, uh, this question doesn't fit into this discussion, Sandeep. Got my point? Okay. So you are asking right. questions. Okay, so completely yes. out, of, out of the discussion. So what we do is, uh, why don't we discuss that in the session, okay? No, no, one minute, sir, sir, one minute. So now what I'm saying is, 
this parameterized constructor uh, is different between trite and abstract class this this is not this question doesn't fit into this uh, discussion okay we, we will come to that when we finish this okay so you might ask me a question uh, how do you prove it well it's getting overwritten like it's not creating a new object this is a question coming from you then that's a so simple i'll just do it now let us take uh, an example probably now i think uh, i'm good with my Keeps a fixed state. So even yeah, last time it is in working state. Uh, probably uh, I didn't uh, observe it properly. That's the only thing. I'll just prove this difference between mutable and see these things are important to understand. It's not like how, how you know the problem is. You can write logic, but to write that logic, first you should have a clarity on the fundamental that is important. The basic thing. So now let's uh, get into the discussion. So what I need, I'm just taking a mutable hash. You can take anything because we know how to create objects, how to add data, how to remove data, we know all that. Uh, on that stuff. Okay. Uh, wait a minute. Yeah, now okay. we are ready. Okay. Is it visible to all of you or should I increase the font? Just a minute. Okay. Let me increase the font here. Okay. Now you can see it will be much more bigger uh, scale. So what I am going to do is uh, I am going to show you the you know right, well, the difference between mutable and immutable objects. Let's take a quick example. Create an object for a hash set or something like set. Okay. Create an object as you know set uh, the basic uh, quality of a set you know right set doesn't allow duplicates that is actually the primary quality okay so now i'm adding some elements just for this purpose okay now uh, the error is because you know uh, what is it that we should uh, import this okay we should import this asset come on buddy yes now i got it now just add some elements Okay. Now, what do you do? Let's modify this. Okay, to modify it, okay, let's allow it to be val and stuff. Okay. So, val, if you put it as val again, you try to create, you have to, it doesn't allow to change that. So, what you have to do? Put it as val. You get an idea. Even if you put var for immutable objects, it appears to be modified. It's not getting modified in memory, but at program level, it appears to be modified. But now, uh, I put var here. Okay, let me try to add some elements now. How some set equal to uh, set plus, you know, right? Uh, so, what happened? I'm, I'm appending uh, a value to the set now. You can see that. Right? Now, let, let us print it. Something like uh, print of uh, set. Now, you might be thinking, suppose if it is a, let me print this uh, here, I'm just saying set dot hash code, take a change the hash code now here, before uh, modifying, <clears throat> and after modifying, what would be the hash code, see the hash codes, we'll do the same with the immutable also, so that you get the difference, 
we don't need to go okay. that part. Okay. So now I'm printing here and printing here also. That's fine. Now here we are modifying this set. What we are doing? Uh, we are modifying this. When you modify what happens, it gets overwritten. It will be added to this. No new object is created if it is mutable has set. What is the proof? Let's run this. Now you can see for the first time we created an object. It has some address, no doubt hash code. I'm printing that through hash code method. If you want to print a address, you should apply this hash code. Because if you directly print reference, you don't get your uh, address. Usually because in, in collections, uh, there is an internal implementation. There is a method whose string is overridden. Okay, just remember, if you want, I'll explain it later. Because that two string is overridden, it will what happens is it will directly print the data from the object. Actually, if you print reference, you should get hash code. But wherever that two string is overridden, there you directly get the data, you don't get the address. In such cases, if you want to see the address, we should apply hash code method. You get my point, right? So that is important. Next after that is I modified. If it is immutable, if you if I try to print the hash code after changing, you, you see a new address. Here you see some address at, at, uh, at this line, and here you see some other address at this line. Now let's uh, run this. Okay, probably I say run as a, what is that a scale application. Now see some change here. Okay, address is getting modified. Huh? Let me print. Uh, let me apply print element here also. Let me apply print element here also. Okay. So that we get line marking. We are getting a new address. Then why they were calling this as new trouble then? n is added no doubt about that that's that's the different story then when you are creating a new object every time you modify then where is the point of uh, mutability then that is mutability means it should hold the same address in both cases So we are importing mutable object, no doubt about that. And when we get the hash code, yeah, data got appended, but uh, it is trying to change it. Well, let me try it this way. Probably this is something uh, we need to analyze because this mutable means what point is a It should not change has to happen on the same object, not on you know, it should not try to create a new address, a new object. Can you see this now? Yeah. This in this way it's working. Can you see now? This is what we expect. We should assign to a new variable here. Can you see it now? You got the point right. This should be the. So what I'm doing now, can you see this now? So this is what mutability is. Now this is perfect. Do you observe that right? So I try to modify set. I assign to some new reference here. Now what it is doing? You are having the same same address there. It's not creating a new object. Earlier when I tried to directly use it. No, no, bro. You are printing the same element, same list. Oh, okay, okay, got it, got it, got it. That's my mistake. Then. See, I should apply set to dot hash code. That's correct, Marley. No, no, correct, correct. So, excuse me. You should uh, sorry for that. So now let us try this. The, I I forgot to change that. Yeah. Yeah. See, actually now in both cases it has to show. 78988691445. That's what the concept of mutability is. But still, scala is sticking to its uh, fundamental. What is that? Uh, usually, it will make data to be immutable. 
uh, then I don't see the difference between mutable and immutable here. This is a bit strange to me also. Uh, but for now, just remember. Okay, we'll do one thing then. We'll do. We'll take some 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 exclusive class from the. Uh, okay, this hierarchy has set might be common for both. Probably uh, it might be behaving that way. We we'll do one thing. Let's try for linked list because linked list is not there. In which one? Immutable hierarchy. Why don't we test it? Okay, let's try with linked list. Let's see because it is a list thing. Probably there is something behind this. We have to check that. Because I am not importing a mutable immutable asset. I am importing immutable asset. So it has to. It's not overwrite data. Oh, yes, yes. I want to put me put link list. It is exclusive only for which one? Exclusive for immutable hierarchy. Let's let's try on this so that. Uh, Mm. This is fine for us. Okay. Actually, it's a if you see there that strike up, it's a deprecated one. Deprecated means nowadays people are not using that. But still, for testing, we can use it, not an issue. Okay, put a list here. Okay. Then I can same thing, list dot hash forward and then just change the list. This time you don't need to take plus all plus stuff is not necessary. We can simply say list two equal to we can do one thing directly. We can do one thing. List. Mm. List of uh, you know right. You know the it has indexing zero one two three four. List of five equals something. Then uh, not list of list. Okay, we can apply the same not issue. Then. Again after that, I'm trying hash code. Again after this, I'm using this. This okay. Now you can see that this is actually the original one, and we are just checking the hash code. And then we are modifying data uh, here. Okay, we are trying to modify this. Now let's run this. Okay. And uh, after that, we are checking the hash code. Index out of bounds exception. Okay. Am I taking wrong index? Zero, one, two, three, four. Okay. Modifying that, right? Okay. Let me take. We cannot take five here, okay? Because five means uh, I am trying to modify something which is not there. You, yeah, we can change it. Something only after having that uh, adding data. To add data, we have a method that plus has to be applied here also. Yes. Okay. So I am modifying it. That's not the way we modify. The, usually, this kind of approach is possible with the map kind of collection. But you know, plus 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 is most recommended. Now, anyhow, my point is, if we change this, does it has any impact on the address? That's my first thing. My concentration is on that. Let's see that. No, you see there. So. This is I need to explore this guy, sir. Probably if you want, we can check it here itself. Otherwise, we can check it in the next session. Maybe we can quickly analyze it. Difference between I really usually that's what notable means the data can be modified, but because of the addresses, uh, I'm a little confused actually. Can you see there? It's clearly saying immutable collection can be updated or extended in place. That this means you can change, add, or remove elements of collection. As I said, never change, but that's not happening, right? This is actually official talk. Okay, so we can we can believe in this. So immutable collections are this. Okay. Immutable collection can be updated or extended in place. This means you can change, you can add, you can remove elements of a collection as a side effect. Okay, fine. Means we can do all that thing besides adding data. That's what meaning of side effect is. Okay, fine. 
immutable collections by contracts never change you still have operations uh, you have still operations that are that stimulates that simulate additions removals or updates but those operations will in, in each case return a new collection see there that's what we are saying every time but that they were not saying the same statement here but if you check the program it is giving a new address for the behavior is almost same and leave the old question unchanged that's what this is doing that is for immutable but uh, this is a bit strange actually this guy is clearly saying that you can see the right this is actually the official documentation an official document is saying that you can modify you can do that that means what it should not create a new object but this guy is uh, when i test with this uh, this is something uh, okay this is a mutable rmp if you got my point right all of you now i know see this analysis is required sir. please increase what uh, this one the size what increase okay sandeep i am just seeing it's fine if it is answer it's fine okay now which one should i increase the the font size here or the font size with the uh, official doc this one this one okay i'll do one thing i'll copy and paste it in the in the notepad okay this is actually the official one you are asking about this one only notable and immutable stuff okay right see here no are you asking about this only somebody is asking increase what is that increase is that what this one right so yeah okay it's clear right it's visible now so what it is saying uh, when you talk about mutable collection it can be updated or extended in place or means extended means merging of two collection you can change add or remove elements of a collection as a side effect but immutable collection every time it creates a new new object but what's happening is that happening here it means uh, that's what the not happening here it's coming up with a new object every time. of course data is appended no doubt about that so this is something which i need to check once okay but for now assume that it gets a uh, stick to this discussion this is how it behaves this is coming the statement is coming from the official uh, document so got it right suppose if i change it with the immutable so you just come remove this uh, input stuff taking hats again okay? and uh, instead of uh, which one instead of uh, uh, immutable has set uh, let me try for uh, let me just put it as uh, immutable has it now just made it immutable here you can see now if you generally put val instead of val if you don't want to modify it's always a good habit to apply awesome. and it does it will be the same even if you as in or not internal new object is created that's also there okay now you have appended it and then print set to here and also set to here this is immutable let me run this okay and uh, you can see see the same thing mm. 
the behavior you can see that i'm seeing the same behavior for mutable has set and immutable man has set this is something strange okay for immutable this is acceptable okay because it will try to create a new object that's what even the official documentation always tells and we had a point to be clear but immutable is not like that. Right. So anyhow, I will uh, I will work on that and update you. Now let's first understand other stuff. That's the difference between mutable and immutable. The only difference is we can modify mutable collection. We cannot usually modify mutable. And if you try that, a new object is created. But if the analysis is something you know it's going in a different direction. But no problem. I will explore and update you on that. Apart from that, okay, leave that stuff aside. For a programming, we don't need to worry about that. See. From a implementation point of view, so like for a logic, what I'm talking from logic perspective, you don't need to worry about whether it is mutable or immutable. How to work with that working thing, we don't need to worry. But you know, suppose you are doing the analysis and uh, you want to know which is better in the, the situation, and uh, you know, right, uh, what kind of uh, data structure you need to uh, apply there. Maybe it's uh, mutable or immutable. Suppose recommended is mutable. You, you need to frequently modify data. When you are when you want to frequently uh, keep changing a collection, then most probably it's better to go for mutable collection rather than immutable. Because you know you can ask me a question. So why mutable? Why should we prefer mutable? Means when you keep on updating, what happens? Uh, usually in, in the case of immutable, uh, it will try to create a new object. Every time you try to modify, a new object is created. But if it is immutable, we don't have such such issue usually. But from this analysis, we see something is missing. I, I will work on that. So that's why people prefer to tend to use immutable. If you don't want to frequently modify a collection, declare it as immutable. Suppose if you want to modify some data structure or a collection frequently, make it mutable. So that's the you know exact uh, way of uh, using the things. But while implementing your business logic, you know, right, you don't have a big problem right? because that is a different area again, right? When you talk about performance thing, then we have to consider all these things, okay? But anyhow, uh, as per mutability, we can change it. But as per the you know output we are seeing, there is something different. Please test it now. You test and find out what what's happening with this. Please analyze this. See in your machine. Probably, I just want to conclude from your side as well. Can you test it this once, please? All of you. So did you did you try it in your machine, sir? All of you. Okay.
Yeah, somebody already, you know, came up with question. See there, I found it in search. See, why mutable and immutable are same in scalar? That is the question. So we have to get from stack overflow only. Because this is something where at least we get. Uh, If they were saying to use plus equal to if you want to change. Okay, let's apply that then. So the case is uh, they were saying something here. And as one more small change put it here. Mm -hmm. No, no. We don't have a lot. This is fine, but uh, so the collection C and you append element with plus equal to R plus the is fine. They are just giving some basic analysis. So vector is immutable. So what happens? This is fine. It's not about mutable variable stuff is different. We don't need that. One minute. I will like analyze this set update yourself. You just quickly test all the classes. That's all. Uh, probably I'm, I don't think we get some information on this because Scala has limited uh, but i'll try i, I will just uh, what is that let through i will uh, you know try to explore the whole uh, websites and see if i can get something probably that is little difficult uh, because they give differences but they don't come with the scenario I will do a workaround on this and update you sir. Okay, uh, let's switch to the next topic. Uh, really, let's uh, test few samples and uh, go with uh, now. First, let's stick to this official uh, information. Okay, that's what uh, it is. Uh, even uh, I can also remove this. Let me add the same stuff here. Let it be the. Let this be there. The official one. Like notable versus immutable, that's what it is. And now assume that keeping this, I, I will analyze and update you tomorrow. Uh, why that is behaving notable is behaving that way? Is there any thing or uh, can we bring it to that notable thing? Is this possible? Uh, I'll give a conclusion in the next session. Okay. So now 
Let's talk about uh, the hierarchy of uh, mutable as well. So mutable also have similar hierarchy as you see here. We don't have big difference as the traversable. You know, they can just uh, you know traversable is common for both. And it has a, a trouble. Okay, that is one more. And this has it's now. The kids are sequence and then uh, set and then map. This has uh, many kids here. This is not uh, Python, right? This is actually uh, this is a scalar, right? Okay, I, sir, I think, sir, memory management has been done in Python. Okay. So, but we are doing it in scalar, right? Yes, definitely Python has uh, an inbuilt memory management, no doubt about that. But point is, uh, Python doesn't fit in all the cases. Scala is most powerful than, than uh, no, right scala is much more powerful than even python if you if, if it is like that you know right uh, point is uh, tuning wise uh, you know performance tuning wise uh, they have provided a lot of uh, you know edge in in scala which is not there in even java also if i am not wrong even in python got it right see that that is necessary we are trying to analyze as much as possible here usually you know right in a basic training session people don't tend to you know right do all that stuff but you know why we are doing is uh, tomorrow if you just understand the very basic uh, just simple creating object testing printing data and you feel that okay i'm done that is not going to help uh, you know right because uh, you know as we are going with experience like you know like probably big data means at least you'll be having four or five experience in some other technology what people expect is uh, and tomorrow if you want to be an architect usually we don't try to become more of managers no, right when you are be becoming an architect we need to get an idea about because we need to we tend to do the uh, uh, tuning of data that's what in one interview they ask me do you perform performance tuning? so performance tuning is done by whom usually the architects do that and they will give the suggestions for us to the developer or senior developers so and this is a stage where we have to understand at that level that's what we are doing here you know i know i am going little overboard but it's not this will be helpful for everyone okay it's not like we are uh, missing out or you know right misusing time here uh, if you don't go into all these details you would actually don't know that all this happening in the background okay and our thought process is uh, just only to a limited uh, thing that's all but now we are thinking little deeper and trying to understand what's happening here okay so that's it now i will i will just think it uh, today I'll, you even you people also try to research on this and if anybody has uh, you know come up with uh, anything uh, useful just uh, share with the, the group because we have a group which is only allowed for you no know, for few of us who are regular so please put it in that uh, regular group okay so now i was talking something here so next one sequence uh, sequence has many kids here you know right uh, but uh, I'm just taking only few kids, not every kid is necessary here. So what is that here? Uh, uh, let us just fix to the, you know the difference between index and linear. I don't want to again uh, talk about this. Uh, I will give a detailed analysis. So somebody, you know, right, let me ask you a question because as this is a weekend, let's chill out with some questions, okay? I'm not saying chill out, chill out, okay? So when you talk about sequence, this this guy has two kids. Okay, what is that? A linear sequence and a index sequence. So could you tell me? Because I have a question. We have already discussed this scenario, this this stuff. What is the difference between linear and index? And uh, when should we use linear sequence and index sequence? This is the discussion stuff. Only thing is, I told you right, the car. Just we need to understand hierarchy and the basic difference. So could anybody tell me this, sir? Linear versus index, what is it? And which is best fit in, uh, which is best fit in what case? When we, we go for linear uh, sequence and uh, when we go for index sequence. You know, I'm, I am not directly, you know, I am just flipping it and writing there. If your memory is storing it like indexed sequence and uh, linear sequence, then answer it in an opposite way. In in uh, immutable hierarchy, it is indexed sequence first and linear sequence after. 
Now, what is difference this between these two when it comes to this here? What is difference here? Linear and indexed. Somebody can answer, sir. Uh, should I continue? We had a discussion, right? Already. See, if your frequent operation is, uh, what is that? Uh, if frequent operation is insertion or retrieval, then we go for which one? Then we go for indexed sequence. Okay. So, and linear sequence means when should we use this? And if you want to frequently prepare data at the beginning of the list, then we go for linear sequence. You know, right? And usually in indexed sequence, internally it uses arrays for the underlying data structures. It uses some arrays kind of stuff. Okay. Uh, like that. And usually linear sequence, it will use some linked list kind of data structures. It doesn't mean that just linked list, sometimes it changes. Uh, sometimes it uses trees, sometimes it uses so, some other stuff. Okay. But the basic thing I'm just telling you. Okay. okay. So that is the difference. Got it right? Do you remember that long back we have discussed at the beginning of collections? So now, uh, I think I don't need to make a note of it because the discussion is clear. Uh, now the question is, sir, let's test one or two samples under the sequence. What about we test uh, linked list and uh, okay. and synchronized stuff? I'll discuss also. Today we'll do one thing. We will just discuss some one or two implementation class of sequence and uh, also tomorrow I'll discuss about what, what is the difference between normal this thing and synchronized stuff. Here. We'll, we'll see that also. So what do you do right now? Let's take linked list. You know, right? What is the advantage of linked list? Linked list has actually collection of nodes and every node has two parts like you know right it has a collection of nodes usually and every node has two parts okay every node has two parts what are those two parts data part and link part address part like, like this if it appears to be like that in Prague itself okay you can just see here it's different so because we have a drawing tool here and is there with this so linked list look like this, something like you have a node, in that you have two parts, again you have a node, okay, in that you have two parts, okay. And this get connected, the, this has some address here, okay, the address of this one, suppose it is 100, okay. Suppose, don't worry about the beautiness of the diagram because I am trying through most handy. I don't think it will come that, that good. Understand the concept. The address of this one will be stored here. So the next node address is stored here. If it is a single linked list, okay, if it is a double linked list, again, you will have a pre and flow connection. Okay, you, you, you can have the address of next uh, node is there here and a previous node also will be stored and you have three, you know, three components, not just two components, if it is a double linked list, okay. So, right, so you need to have a decent uh, understanding of data structures when you are working with uh, data analytics, keep in mind, sir. Tomorrow, even if you want to switch to data science, most of the algorithms depends on data structures. Just think about it, sir. Okay. So uh, here uh, you have some data, something like one. You put whatever you want, sir. It might be integer, it might be string, whatever it is. It has some other address here. Okay. Leave about this. For now, it is end. I put null here. Usually, the uh, like the end of the stuff ends with null. That is null. Leave it. It will denote end of. It. Now the point is, this is what linked list is. Got it right? It has a nodes and every node has two parts. Uh, internally, the connection will be like this. One thing. Generally, you know, right? Uh, it is best fit if you want to add data. Okay, at the beginning here. Okay, if you want to add data, uh, prepare data, then definitely linked list is best fit. Okay, so that what happens? Uh, you know, right? Uh, if the space complexity and time complexity two things are there when you talk about an algorithm i don't want to go too deep into that even i am not that strong in that area because if you can start analyzing we get that so the number of uh, shiftings if you add at the beginning you don't need to shift data frequently so that uh, you know right the comp two things are going to impact whenever you do make change to any data structure one is uh, the space complexity to do that changes to do that shuffling uh, how memory is utilized, that is one scenario. Second scenario is uh, 
uh, how this uh, what is that how much time it is taking this is one question in today's interview when you do the data shuffling uh, which takes more more shuffling which takes less and which is best you might be thinking why this guy is teaching all this stuff all right everything has a, a direct or interlink indirect link to your actual stuff okay and that question is because this this level ground level analysis is going to help you a lot yeah so there will be next uh, correct uh, sunil is saying something you got clarity here right so that's what happens with linked list and it is best fit if you want to prepare data and here usually if it is double linked list three components uh, this will be written as next and uh, the previous one as a uh, okay uh, like you know last okay, or previous they will put it as previous itself the address of previous is put into the previous pointer and uh, next is put it into the next pointer like that you got it right so that's one thing next one so i am going to so that's about it next hey, other stuff what is that it is dynamic it is heterogeneous all that is thing and then uh, uh, one more thing is uh, insertion order definitely if it is a sequence it will preserve insertion order insertion order is preserved these things are same sir it doesn't change uh, and then uh, what else we do? duplicates definitely this will allow duplicates okay and then when is best fit sir a linked list sir. if you want to prepare data definitely linked list is best fit okay so you, if you and this is a duplicated one if you look at this uh, when i tried this here linked list you, you you see you you see that striking right whenever you see some striking on a method or a class or anything that means it is a duplicated duplicated means it is not recommended to use the current current uh, version okay that's how it like by bajaj chetak you know right nowadays bajaj people are not producing chetak but still people are running in the on roads right that chetak is there still got it right that's what duplicated duplicated means so outdated but still if you want you can use it but people they are saying that don't use it that's the point now i'm just erasing the drawing also no i am talking about something here so if we want to prepare data and also you know we are also trying to understand when should we use this at the beginning of a list the beginning of the sequence as you can also say because eagle list is a sequence no doubt about that beginning of a sequence then prefer linked list then go for ll Okay, somebody is saying uh, address of previous object is stored at the next object. Okay, that's fine, sir. I think you you are I think you are uh, giving in a different way. Address of next next node is stored into the previous uh, node. Okay, if it is forward, backward means address of previous is is uh, stored into the uh, previous part of a uh, node. That's all, uh, Sunil. I think you are you are trying to tell me something. Okay. Right. So this is the idea about this. We'll do a quick program here. It's nothing. It's simply what you can do. It also has all this stuff, sir. Uh, something like you can apply val all, all the time. You don't have an issue. Some ll equal to some linked list, and then uh, add some data. If you want, you can add some duplicates as well. That, that is the nature of that. And it will for sure preserve the insertion order. And don't forget to put in the of this stuff. Uh, and here you can simply say. What is that said? It simply use a linker list. Following it, you can see that strike on that. I told you, right? It's duplicated, sir. Right? That strike means duplicated. See, we can test it. Maybe in in your uh, real project, you may not uh, use it. You don't need to worry about it. Which to use, what not to use. It depends on you know, right, uh, the analysis and the team will decide. And it's up to you also sometimes which data structure to choose. So now I'm just printing it. Okay, print it now. Other stuff, you can, the loop stuff, applying iterators, all that is almost quite the same for us. And you can see there uh, probably the duplicates are there. Insert not is preserved. And then uh, if you want, you can add some nulls as well. Suppose uh, you can put some null data in that. Still, that is allowed. Okay, we don't have a problem. And then, uh, what else? If, if you want, you can add heterogeneous data. Maybe I can put something like. You know, so ABC string also this is heterogeneous data and uh, you can keep adding data 
how much you want to care, keep on adding data. That's what dynamic is all about. So that these are all uh, you know the very important things here. Suppose I want to iterate it. So oh, yeah, do something like uh, we can only listen to for here something. Okay, and you can say LL and then simply different element by element by applying this parameter. So uh, tomorrow we do some working session. I will give some use cases. Probably it will be very useful for you. We will mix objects with collections. Objects in the sense we create some employee class and with classes we we'll use test classes uh, and then uh, we construct some employee customer objects and we try to put it in the collection. We iterate that object and we do some analysis again. Suppose employee salaries in, in that object in that collection. So mass of uh, employee, min of employee. We can try all that manually. That's how it is going to help you. So that that's fine. But now you can see, sir. This is how iterating, uh, and there are different iterators also. And methods you can try, you know, suppose uh, if this is heterogeneous data, right? So generally, when you try to apply the sophisticated, so called sophisticated iterators like map, filter, make sure it is a uh, homogeneous data when you, because you have to be cautious if it is heterogeneous data. A couple of interview questions here I would like to add to all of you. So, one thing is today's the question is uh, higher level objects, methods, sorry. What is the higher level function, higher order function? Okay. It's there in Scala as well as in Python. There's one question. And how it is useful? And he asked me to explain on the scenario. So I, I took time and I have given different scenarios. It's not just one scenario I have explained. So why I bought that point here is because map is a higher order function. All right. Most of the functions in uh, in, in Scala or Spark are higher order functions. Okay. So then here, what is that, uh, folks? Uh, LL dot map of, uh, you know, right? Uh, we can take one. Uh, what to do now? Uh, we, take, we need to know the lambda syntax, right? Uh, something like first parameter list. Uh, that is one thing. So I think just simple one parameter syntax. Uh, you know, you have to apply racket operator. I'm just removing this heterogeneous data now. I'm just showing you how to apply a simple uh, iterator, like sophisticated map thing, which try to change every, uh, every element in that. So I'm just saying x into x now. And this returns some data. So what I want to do is I want to assign this to some other variable, something like value LL2 equal to. So that uh, that will be perfect for me. I'm just showing you how this works. Okay, print level of LL2. So just run this. You can see that. Then another scenario. Perfectly, we have a square of all these elements. You can see that. Similarly, you can apply filter, you can apply all that stuff also. You can apply what is that uh, uh, ll2 dot uh, you can also use this uh, page which can be applicable directly from this one sorry so it has to come in on this one okay. so you can directly pass a lambda to this uh, yeah, you can do some direct while iterating each element you can cause some change to that otherwise you can just pass a printer which will just uh, try to print the data okay you can see that but in a real environment that won't be the case, sir. You know why? Because printing is something which we rarely do in a real environment, just a testing case, okay, a development case. But in a, when you move into the production, you have to remove all this nonsense. Well, if people don't allow you to have that uh, scrap in your code, okay? Is that fine for all of you? So what is this? And I, I need that on collection now, Madhu. It should be on collection. You, you created a class and you tried it, right? It's not like that. This is a customized example, right? Can you can you try with the collection and do it? Yeah, Madhu. in collection also back and the object only though. All right, go. So that's what I tried, you know. So I tried to you know simulate with uh, Analog with this one. I understand. So when yes. I analog, it, it is expected as we, however, we uh, thought the same way it is giving the same uh, object uh, hash code it is giving. I don't know why it is not working. <laughs> no, this is actually a customized one. You see, it's not like uh, we are we are doing something wrong. How the algorithm internally implemented the API, you know, right? It depends on the algorithm implemented in API mode. We don't have a control on that, right? 
that is implemented by the Scala people. So we don't have a control for APIs. So we can analyze it or why it's working like that. We, we get the reason, that's all. And we, we cannot change the change the behavior because it's not our, our responsibility. Okay. They the scalar people are is giving up, coming up with that means there is a reason behind that. We should get to that. That's what our our uh, uh, expectation should be. Okay. Okay, okay. So no, we don't need to worry too much about that. That's not you know for us, okay. We have we just need to get the reason why in mutable also it is to create a new object. Usually it's not should not happen. Uh, why it's immutable is perfectly clear for us. That thing we should uh, we, we should get to that point, okay? Hmm. Even even uh, that's what we do even in our projects also, right? We we find we tend to get the reason. We have defects going on now. We cannot fix that end. But what we have to do is uh, at least we need to re find the reason why those defects are failing. That's what because some defects are not in our country. They are developed by some other team. They have to take care of it like that. Okay. Anyhow, let me come back to this. So, if you want to add elements, you know, right, sir? For that plus, that minus, you know, write something like val ll3 equal to uh, so this. Uh, plus. When I do this ll2 plus 10. something like and here okay, this is the we have to apply dot also sticking dot we I remove dot so I'm adding 10 but point is we have to add it as a tuple probably I try to add it directly that's why no this is little scale okay we have appended data probably I didn't apply this is the other. Use colon plus because this is a straight list of sequence. Now uh, just try to put this. This is appending data. We are adding some data to this list by applying colon plus or plus colon because sequence uses these operators and set all that stuff uses plus. Okay. Because I tried plus, you see, got uh, it's not allowing. But when you say colon plus, uh, this 10 is added uh, at the end, okay? If you put uh, plus colon, plus means if plus comes first, this, this should be prepended. Uh, again, uh, let me just... Uh, it's expecting the... Uh, Not here. Okay, let me run it. Let me run it. You can see now it's it's preparing. Also put dot here because when I directly di do it, it's throwing another. You can give a space. That's it. That is enough. But, this is not. Uh, so one thing is dot is working. That's fine. I said dot. Also expecting. So this is working. So what is that? Somebody is telling some other solution. Just copy and paste there. If you have any other solution. This is prepending, and uh, we have seen two cases: prepending and appending. We can do all that stuff. We have tested this on list also.
give some space okay Every space no? see there space okay. anyhow uh, nothing to worry these are all simple things only okay dot if, if we have an issue that's all it will work it's working maybe you can try it without dot also so similarly this is we have seen two scenarios one is this is what prepending data okay what is that this is prepending data 10 is added to the first okay. next one appending means what and just now we have seen uh, colon plus colon plus okay this is a uh, and change the variable means that's, that's also we have to look into this because we cannot use uh, duplicate variables okay this will also work you can see in case one it is prepending in case two it is uh, appending which is most recommended on linked list usually prepending but anyhow that itself is outdated we don't need to worry too much about it uh, you can also try other methods sir yeah, i'm just showing you a simple use case what i do is i will try to explore it what is the exact reason Probably, I don't think uh, it's not that easy to get that uh, that point what we tried today, but uh, I will try my best to come up with uh, some solution there. Okay, I'll try to research as much as possible. Okay, just to test this, and we'll stop the session. After this, okay, please test it just for analysis. Okay, and all corrections are same. Tomorrow we go for a workaround. Okay, because anyhow. While doing workarounds, we try to understand differences. Okay, that will be more uh, useful for us. Okay. And you test all the methods because it's there in the video when we what we have applied on list. Okay. Uh, we have done some four or five sessions only on methods. Okay, same apply, same methods apply here also. That's all. You don't have a big issue. Okay, test it, folks. And maybe if anybody can come up with any solution from your side also on on that scenario, like mutable and immutable difference, we we have tried right. Mutable should change, should not uh, you know right when you modify, it should not create a new object, but it's happening. Probably Scala is taking it to its fundamental that making everything immutable. In case of mutability, also there is something at memory level that we will analyze and uh, we, we will discuss, we will uh, come to some so, some conclusion tomorrow. Please tell me, sir. Uh, I think Sunil is saying something. Sunil, uh, you have correct, you are getting correct output only. While LL2 we receive 25 value. Where it's getting a uh, when you say pi square, you get 25, right? Sunil. When you go for pi square, pi square gives you 25 only, right? Here. Okay, folks, if you have tested it, uh, we'll stop here. Tomorrow we'll do a workaround. I, I will prepare uh, some beautiful problems for all of you. Let's let's uh, go a little deeper into collections. Okay. Timing, okay, shall, can we, shall we plan from three to five? So that after five, you can go out or you, you can uh, do something. Is three to five fine for all of you? Uh, yeah. If possible, please keep sharing the videos with your friends, colleagues. Maybe please uh, request them to subscribe, folks. Uh,
Okay. Uh, did you test it? Any questions? Let's have questions if we have. Does anybody have questions here? Tomorrow we will. Uh, when we are planning for Spark sessions, after might be this will take a week or two, then we start Spark work. Because without proper scalar, again we have to again. Uh, no, we will get uh, back back bench again. We are done with collections almost. Uh, I think tomorrow I'll do a workaround, and uh, next week, what we do is uh, uh, we keep focusing on uh, what is that uh, other other topics which need to be covered, like uh, exception handling, multi-threading, okay, and few more files. Uh, once that is done, I will switch to the Spark code. Probably I'm expecting to start. Uh, probably why don't we start from uh, July first week, uh, first onwards? Let's plan it from July first. Okay, guys, uh, I'll stop here. Uh, I hope you have tested this. We will we'll catch up again.